Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, we will start. Yeah, so make sure those who are here, yeah, you can actually adjust your video so that we can see you, your teachers can see you. Yeah. So, anyways, okay, so this is going to be our 16 lecture. Yeah. So, reaction kinetics part two. So, we are going to actually finish this uh, chapter today. Now, before we go into this uh, part, yeah, so I'll just uh, do a revision, yeah, so you can see here what we have done in our previous class. So if you look at these uh, reaction kinetic graphs, okay, they are going to be uh, two different graphs that you need to know, okay, which is going to be the first one, okay, is going to be your rate versus your concentration. Okay, rate versus concentration. Normally, okay, we refer to your rate equation. Rate equals to K, then the reactant and so on. Yeah. So if you want to draw this graph, okay, so there are three types of graph that you need to, uh, to know. One is going to be for zero order reaction. So let's say for zero order reaction, I'm going to use this pen. Zero order reaction. This is going to be the graph for zero order. Now, this is going to be a K, which which is going to be the constant if you have zero order like that yeah so it's going to be r to the power of zero is going to be one rate is k yeah so we also have okay another graph which is going to be if you have r to the power of one okay r to the power of one then it's going to be uh going to be a straight line graph directly proportional okay directly proportional so this is going to be first order reaction and you can also have okay a second order reaction okay which is going to be if i put two over there so this is going to be a quadratic graph okay which is going to be something like x uh, y equals to x to the power of two yeah so these are the three graphs okay, within the rate and concentration graph that you need to know yeah so do remember okay for zero order okay the rate is independent of concentration okay for first order okay the rate is directly proportional to the concentration for second order reaction the rate is directly proportional to the square of the concentration yeah so please remember that and we have also learned okay concentration versus time graph okay now do remember for concentration versus time graph there are two graph only yeah two shape okay one is going to be a straight line like this okay where this is i'm assuming is going to be reactant yeah reactant is going to finish up so it's a straight line like this this is going to be zero order reaction. Why? The gradient is constant. The gradient is what? Okay, the gradient is going to be the rate. And you can see the rate for zero order is going to be constant. Okay, so that is going to be zero order. And we have, okay, first order and second order. They are going to have curve. So the curve can be like this, okay? And we also have another type of curve, which is going to be like this, okay? So something like this, okay? So you can actually identify if let's say the curve is within the same graph, you can tell, okay, the one that is going to be uh, deep uh, is going to be second order. The one like this is going to be first order, but most of the time, okay, we don't have first order and second order, okay? Uh, the graph in the same particular graph, okay? So it's going to be difficult to identify because we can only see curve. So what we can do is, okay, we have this concept, what we call as half-life, okay? What is half-life? Okay, half-life is the time taken, okay, for the reaction concentration, okay, to become half of its value. Now, if the half-life is going to be constant, every single time is going to be the same, then you can differentiate because half-life constant is going to be first order reaction only so this is actually telling you if it is going to be you want to identify first order reaction uh, then your half life is going to be constant okay so it means uh, what is half life okay generally from here to become like this half of it value then it's going to be this is going to be your first half life okay from here to become half okay then they will come over here then come over here you can see another half life so the distance is the same 
Okay, so that is going to tell us that uh, this is going to be the rate uh, curve is going to be the first order reaction. Uh, that is going to be the only thing that you need to know. Okay, another thing that you need to know also over here is, okay, if let's say I have a reaction, A plus 2B to give you C, uh, we are going to have a rate equation. But do remember rate equation, okay, we don't write K then concentration of the reactant, A, A and B, and then we, fo uh, we don't follow the stoichiometric uh, equation. We don't follow the number over here. This one must be determined by the experimental data. Uh, but there is another one more thing that you need to know, okay? What will happen to the rate when temperature increases? I think everyone should know now. Temperature increases, the rate increases, okay? But if you refer to the rate equation, when temperature increases, rate increases, okay? There shouldn't be any change in the concentration. So how do you get the rate to increase? The only way that you get the rate to increase by making the K to increase. So do remember, when temperature changes, K changes. So what is K? Okay, K is rate constant. Okay, your rate constant okay, will be different at different temperature okay what does it mean okay let's say i have a graph okay this is going to be the rate okay and this is going to be the concentration okay and we know rate against concentration let's say we're talking about zero order yeah okay for the zero order if you draw like this this is your k value okay let's say i'm going to ask you okay for this zero order go and draw a uh, a graph okay sketch a graph when uh, temperature, this is temperature, let's say, for example, 300 Kelvin. Uh, draw the, temp, uh, the rate versus concentration graph, okay, for zero order, okay, at temperature 500 Kelvin. So how do you draw? So do remember, okay, how do you draw? The K value will increase, okay? So the new K value will be higher, okay? Because it is directly proportional, okay? So you see. When temperature increases, K increases. When temperature decreases, K decreases. Very, very simple. Yeah. Please remember this. Okay. Rate constant will change when temperature changes. Okay. These are the things that I want uh, want you guys to remember from my previous lesson. Okay. This one I'll give it to you. Okay. When I uh, prepare the notes and video. Okay. But now. Okay, coming, coming back to our lesson today, yeah? Now, this lesson today, you can see here, okay? Uh, the first thing that I want to teach you, okay, is going to be, I want to discuss about, okay, the rate determining step. Now, just now we actually started, okay, with uh, saying that uh, rate equals to K, then you put the reactant, you put uh, whatever reactant based on their order and so on. Then after that, we say that the value that you have over here, A, B, and over here, okay, the order of the reaction, okay, is independent, okay, of the stoichiometric equation. Uh, do remember, this is only when you have in a, a direct equation, okay, but sometimes, okay, we do have equations that will go through multi-step reaction. Okay, many step. Okay, so in in that sense, if you have many step, you can see here. Okay, that is going to be step number one, step number two, step number three. Now, if you have many step, the first step is normally the slowest step. Okay, then followed by fast step and fast step. So you can see this is going to be the slow step. Okay, N two O five to become N O two plus N O three. Okay, and so on. You can see the equation and so on. Okay, that is, uh, the equation doesn't matter. Yeah, but what is important over here is the overall rate of the reaction depends on the slower step. This is very important. This is going to be, will be slightly contradicting with what we have learned earlier. Okay, because okay, the rate now depends on the slower step. It means, okay, the whatever that you have in the slow step, okay, the reactant must appear, okay, must appear in your rate equation. Okay, the reactant must appear in your rate equation. Those reactants that do not appear in the slower step will never appear, okay, in your rate equation. So, for example, 
This is also reactant. This is also reactant. Okay, they will never appear in your rate equation. So if I want to write the rate equation for this rate equals to K, N2O5, another important thing is, remember I told you rate equation, they do not follow stoichiometric uh, equation, but for multi-step, they will follow the stoichiometric equation, which is going to be one more than first order. Okay, so this is going to be very, very, very important. So you see here, okay, if the substance do not appear in the overall rate equation, it does not take part in rate determining step. So what is rate determining step? Rate determining step is the slowest step in multi-step reaction. Okay, so it means that every single time when they say this particular reaction, this is going to be the slowest step, uh, then that is going to be involved in your rate equation. Okay, if you still couldn't get it, let's actually move on. Okay, I'll show you another example. Okay, you see here, okay, these are going to be a multi-step reaction. They say that uh, you have this uh, propanon, okay, propanon reacting, okay, and then with OH minus, and then they say this is a slow step, okay. And then after that, they will react with Br2. This is going to be the fast step. It means here, you can see there are going to be uh, four different types of reactant. One, two, three, four. Four different types of reactant. But when I write the rate equation, I write K equals, uh, rate equals to K. And then I only include the one in the slow step, the reactants in the slow step, which is this one, okay? I'll just put one, yeah, okay, propanon, yeah? And then OH minus, okay, OH minus, okay? And another thing that you need to put over here is very, very important for multi-step reaction, which is going to be the slower step, you follow the number one mole, one mole, one, one. Okay, that is going to be first order with respect to propanon, first order with respect to OH minus. If you're still confused, okay, please get everything in order. Yeah, so please remember, okay, simple thing, okay, if it is going to be multi step reaction, okay, then we look at the slow step. Whatever reactant in the slow step we put in, and whatever number of moles that they have in the equation, we put it as our order of the reaction. So you can see here, okay, this one and this one, K, okay, and then bromine do not appear. Why? Because they do not appear in your slow step. Yeah. So is the first step always the slowest step? Yes. Okay, yes. So normally the slowest step is the first step, okay, that will be in the uh, equation. But do remember, sometimes the way they write, okay, the way they write, they will ask you to identify the slowest step. Uh, later, we, we will look at that example, okay? So the normal one, yeah, the first step is always the slowest step, okay? Now, let's move on, yeah? So this is some questions that they have asked in your uh, past year paper. Okay, the reaction between X and Y was studied. Uh, they give you, this is the overall equation, yeah? And then they say the following sequence of step, okay, is a proposed mechanism for the reaction. Step one and step two. Now, step one and step two. Now, to answer your question just now, we don't know yet whether step one is slower step or step two slower step, but they will tell, okay? Step one now, they say slower step. Okay, so it means if this is slow, okay, it means that this is going to be the rate determining step, okay? So when you identify this is going to be the rate determining step, straight away, forget about this first, yeah? Straight away, rate equals to what? Rate equals to the reactant in the slower step. The reactant is what? Only X, okay? Only X. So you just put x okay don't forget the k yeah so i'll put the k and what else you need the number of moles that you have over there two automatically you put two there okay so this is going to be supposed to be the rate equation for this uh reaction yeah so if they ask you deduce the value of m and n okay you look at m x to the power of m okay what is x to the power of m this is two so m is two 
So y to the power of n. There is no y. How do you eliminate y? Okay, y to the power of zero. Zero order. The rate is independent to y. So y is going to be, the n is going to be zero. Okay, it means the y is going to be zero order. Okay, so only this one. Okay, n is going to be zero. Okay, very simple. Okay, and it's only one mark. Okay, but sometimes, okay, uh, can it be more difficult? Yeah, can. Okay, it can be more difficult. Okay, if you look at the example number two, they give you a reaction. Okay, they give you this reaction. And then, okay, and then they say that the rate, okay, the rate is first order with respect to NO and F2. So if they say that first order, you write the equa uh, rate equation, rate equals to K, first order to NO, first order to F2. You write that first, okay? You write that first. And then they say the mechanism has two steps, okay? Step number one, step number two. So I'll just put step number one, step number two. And the first step, normally I'll take it as a slow step, okay? And then they say suggest equations, okay? Suggest equations for the two step for this me uh, mechanism, okay? Stating which one is the rate determining slow step, okay? So, this is the rate determining, yeah? So now, if I want to suggest, okay, the step for this, okay, what I need to do is refer to your rate equation. Your slower step, okay, must have what? Definitely must have these two reactants. Okay, must, okay, it must be there. So you put NO and you put F2. No need to refer to this now. Okay, must be there. And how many moles? Do remember, it will follow the number of moles in your stoichiometric equation. So must be one mole, must be one mole over here. Okay, must be one mole over there. So you need to come up, okay, you just need to come up with uh, some ideas. What can I put over here? Okay, before getting the entire equation like this, okay? And you can see 2NO plus F2, that NOF, what I can do. The first thing that you can do is just suggest an intermediate. NOF2 is an intermediate. Just come up with something, okay? So once you get that, okay, when you put that, it's going to be one mole, one mole, yeah? So it's NOF2. Now, when you look at over here, there is no NOF2. That is the function of NOF2, intermediate. It must be eliminated when you add these two steps. Okay, left and right, NOF2 must be there. So what I can do now, I can add, okay, with another reactant, okay? What is the another reactant? Just now I use one mole of NO, okay? But you need two moles of NO. You put another NO over here. What will happen when I add this reaction one and reaction two, you will have two moles of NO, okay? NOF2 will be gone, F2 will be there, okay? So what I will get, Okay, you need to get what? Two moles of NOF. Okay, you just put first two moles of NOF, try and see whether this is balanced or not. Okay, N, there is two, two N. Oxygen, there's two, two O. F2, there is two. F is going to be two as well. So this is going to be correct. Okay, then this is going to be my suggested yeah, mechanism for this two-step reaction. What is important over here is to make sure your slow step contains an O, contains F2, must have, okay, must have. Make sure there is only one mole of NO over here because one year. Only one mole of F2 over here. Don't go and put two NO over there, okay? That is going to be wrong, okay? This is, again, similar to what we did over here, yeah? Can it be more difficult than this, okay? Maybe, lah. yeah, maybe, but I, uh, you can see roughly, okay, it's going to be one mark or two marks question, yeah? So I will look, uh, I'll show you checkpoint number three, yeah? We will try checkpoint number three, where it's going to be a full question, which also has a three-step mechanism, which is going to be similar with what we've been doing just now. So let's actually try this, yeah? Okay, this is going to be some sort of revision with what we have done earlier, yeah? So you have this uh, table, 
and you need to deduce the order. Okay, you need to deduce the order. How to deduce the order? Okay, with respect to this. Okay, if you want to deduce this order, so you need to actually when this one, you need to select, yeah. So when this one double, okay, I need to make sure the other reactant, okay, must be constant. You see, constant. Okay, constant. So it means that whatever that I put over here times by two, it is 100% dependent on the change in concentration of okay whatever that i times over there yeah so nothing to do with oh so i can see from one to become two this is also times two you should know by now okay when something times two you times two when something times three times three times four times four it's directly proportional so what is the order of the reaction the order is going to be first order directly proportional so if I put rate equals to K, I just put first order with respect of what? This one, CH3, CHO. Okay, this is going to be first order. Okay, so I found out already. Okay, now the next is to find out, okay, to find out what is going to be the order of the reaction with respect to OH minus. Now, if you have OH minus, the first thing, uh, if I double, I need to make sure that this one is constant, but you will have a problem for this question. Okay, when I double from here to here, this one also changes. When I double here, this one also changes. Okay, so it's okay. You still can do, okay, how you can do this. Quite simple, because you already found out, okay, how the rate changes according to CH3CHO. Okay, so let's say for, uh, for now, I want to find out, okay, from here to become like this, okay, this is going to be times two, okay, times two. And from here to become like this, this is going to be times four, okay, times four. Now, I know from here, okay, to become this, since I know that the rate is going to be first order to this, yeah, to this, if I times by four, it means that it must times by four also, okay, it must be times with four. But I need to also see times with what? Okay, times with what? Okay, when I times by two, this one times by what? And you can see one to become eight, okay, is going to be times by eight, okay? So what number that you're supposed to have over there, the number must be automatically, I think you know, the number must be two. It means that, okay, it means that if you times by two, yeah, this one belongs to this. Okay, if you times by two, it means this one also times by two. Okay, so it means that it is also directly proportional, okay, to what? To OH minus. So OH minus also to the power of one. Okay, order of the reaction is also first order. Okay, so now state the overall re uh, rate equation for this reaction. I already wrote over there, just put K. CH3, CHO, OH minus, done. And then state the units for the rate constant. Uh, this is quite easy. Rate is what? Okay, mole, okay, per dm cube, okay, per second, okay. So if you want to find the K, K divided by this, concentration to the power of two, yeah? So mole dm negative three, and then mole dm negative three, you cancel this, cancel this. Okay, what is K? K is going to be more, bring up negative one, dm, positive three, and then per second. So this is going to be the unit. So you just need to put the unit more, negative one, dm, three per second. Now, the next question is calculate the initial rate. Okay, where this one is going to be 0 0.3, this one is going to be 0 0.3. Now, there are two ways to do this, okay? One is to find the K, or the second way is just to, by using the same way that we did just now, okay? Like, for example, if you want, okay, from, let's say I'm taking from here, yeah? If you want this to become, okay, 0 0.3, okay, from there, okay? And then you want from here to become 0 0.03, okay? What will happen from here to here? Uh, that is the question. Yeah, that's the question. So what you can do is, okay, since you know the rate, uh, uh, what is going to happen to the rate and so on, this is going to be times by three, yeah? 
this is going to be times by three, 0 0.1 times uh, three is 0 0.3. And this one, you know, this is times by two, okay? And I know that, okay, with respect to uh, this uh, CH3, CHO, if this one times by three, this one also must times by three, okay? And with respect to OH minus also, it's going to be first order. If times by two, that one also must times by two. So what does it mean? The entire thing must times by six. One times six is going to be six. The answer is going to be six. I hope you understand. Yeah. So if you move on, uh, this is today's lesson. Now I will rewrite again. Okay, this one rate equals to K CH3 CHO OH minus. Okay, this is going to be all first order. Yeah. So this one, we will use this information. It's an extension to that question, yeah? So they say that a three-step mechanism has been proposed. It means they have proposed a three-step mechanism. And then, okay, you need to find out, okay, using your rate equation in three, this is the rate equation, yeah? Predict which one is the rate determining step and explain your answer, yeah? So normally I don't call students, okay? But this time maybe I'll call students, yeah? Megan, can you explain or identify which one might be the slower step and your explanation why? Um, is it the first step, sir? Yes, the answer is correct. Okay, step number one and why? Um, because there is no intermediate form yet. Okay, or the best answer is going to be, you see, yeah, if you have the rate equation, you see, all the okay the reactants in the rate equation must be in the slower step or the rate determining step you can see that they appear here oh is also appear over here there is no oh over here definitely cannot be step number two there is no oh over here cannot be okay cannot be step number uh, rate determining step so and another one is going to be to the power of one to the power of one you see one mole reacting with one more uh, that is going to be the explanation the explanation is both okay both ch3 cho and oh minus appears in step number one okay and the order okay is consistent okay with the with the equation Okay. So the order is going to be consistent one and one. Okay, so you just need to explain that. So that is going to actually three different questions. Okay, that you can get for rate determining step. Okay, so they, uh, I hope you can understand. Yeah, but if you don't understand, okay, yes, okay, I do have videos on this. You can go and find out from the videos. Yeah, but similar questions, similar way of explanation. Yeah, but now, okay, let's actually move on. Okay, to the next part of this chapter. Okay, which is going to be the catalyst. Uh, everyone, when you hear the word catalyst, you know lah. Okay, catalyst is used okay, to lower the activation energy. But if now okay, in A2 and AS, you should know they provide an alternative pathway okay, with lower activation energy. Yeah. So they don't lower the activation energy. So it's an alternative pathway. Yeah. So they will follow a different route. Okay. So here, okay, you can see from the syllabus what they expect you to uh, learn. Yeah. So they, the first one is to explain catalyst can be homogeneous and heterogeneous. So let's actually learn the first one. Okay, what is homogeneous catalyst? What is going to be heterogeneous catalyst? Quite simple. Catalyst in the same phase as reaction mixture, okay, they are known as homogeneous. Okay, if let's say all the mixture in your uh, in your equation is aqueous with liquid and so on, it means they are generally liquid. And then you go and put the catalyst, which is going to be aqueous, it's also going to be in liquid form. So they are going to be in uh, in the same phase. Okay, therefore we say it's homogeneous catalyst. Heterogeneous catalyst is going to be catalyst in different phase as the reaction mixture. Example, okay, you can see also here the example of this uh, heterogeneous. Okay, the one that you always study, yeah, uh, Haber process. So if you look at Haber process, okay, Haber process is nitrogen 
plus hydrogen to give you ammonia, okay? So if you balance this, okay, you just put over there, okay? So now, okay, we know that the Haber process uses Fe, iron powder, okay? So iron is going to be solid, okay? And we know that all these are gas. So you see the reaction mixture is gas, but the catalyst is going to be solid. Different phase, okay? Therefore, okay, they are known as, iron is known as heterogeneous catalyst, okay? You do not need to remember everything, but let's say if they ask you questions on that, then you need to know which one is homogeneous and heterogeneous and why, okay? But in your syllabus, okay, they need you to know all these four reactions, okay, which I'm going to actually go through also after this. Okay, so uh, all these and how they work and so on, you need to know, yeah. So first, I will go for the easy one, yeah. So I'll change the uh, sequence. Rather than going for homogeneous, okay, let's go for the easier one, heterogeneous catalyst, okay. Now, heterogeneous catalyst, okay. What is heterogeneous catalyst? I already told you, the catalyst okay, must be in different phase compared to reaction mixture. And I am going to use the Haber process like what we did earlier, the Haber process. The example is nitrogen and hydrogen. So I'm going to use that example. This one is found in your textbook, yeah? So you can see over there, normally heterogeneous catalyst involve gases molecule, okay? Where the catalyst is going to be the solid catalyst where what will happen, okay? We are going to use the surface of the solid catalyst. Okay, so this is the catalyst, the iron powder, Fe. So what generally happens, okay, this one, the mechanism of the catalyst can be explained using theory of adsorption. Uh, no spelling error over there, yeah? AD, okay, adsorption, okay. Or in your textbook, they also say it is also known, okay, the chemical reaction, yeah, it involves formation of bond. So they are also known as chemisorption, yeah? So this one, uh, not so important about terms, okay? But, okay, the, this term is very important, okay? What is the difference between adsorb, okay, which we will use, and what is the difference between absorb, yeah? Adsorb is going to be, if you have something, okay, they go and attach on top. Yeah, they go and attach, like something like cellophane tape. They form bond on top, okay? But absorb, if you have something, they will move inside, okay? That is absorb, okay, moving right into. So what we are going to focus is going to be adsorb. They will stick to the surface of the catalyst. So here, okay, you can see what happened. Okay, generally, the gas molecules, the hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas, they will diffuse. They will come to contact with the iron catalyst, okay? And when they come into contact, what happened? They go and form bonds. They do remember, they still have the bonds between each other, yeah? So they form bonds, okay, with the surface of the catalyst. Uh, that bond formation is known as adsorption very important you need to use that term don't go and say it attach itself okay it comes into contact no okay adsorption yeah and then okay there will be reactions okay what is reaction now okay because they are hydrogen and hydrogen every single time look at each other's face they get bored okay they want to try something else uh, now formation of bonds is going to happen the bond between the hydrogen and hydrogen will be weakened the bond between nitrogen and nitrogen will be weakened so now they will explore new bond forming which is going to be between nitrogen and hydrogen and so on they will form ammonia yeah so when they form ammonia still remember okay the reaction happened the ammonia is still with the bond having the bond to the surface of the catalyst Okay, so what you need to do next is the ammonia must go out. So it means that they need to break the bond with the catalyst. The breaking of the bond with the catalyst is known as desorption. Okay, they break the bond. And after that, what will happen? You stay away from a uh, catalyst, so you just move away. Okay, enjoy your life. Yeah, so that is going to be diffusion away. Yeah, so if you summarize this, diffusion, adsorb, having the reaction, done 
BSOP, okay, then after that, say bye-bye, gone, yeah? So this is going to be heterogeneous catalyst and how it works, okay? Now, if you look at the syllabus, what they want, okay, they want you to know about iron inhibitor process, which I have explained to you, okay? Another one that they want under heterogeneous catalyst is going to be the usage of palladium platinum and rhodium in catalytic removal okay, uh, of oxides of nitrogen from the exhaust gases of car engines. Uh, this one, very, very important. You have learned this in AS under sulfur and nitrogen. Okay, or nitrogen and sulfur. Okay, and this one I take from uh, this question in the textbook. They say in catalytic converters, okay, rhodium, but not only rhodium, yeah, palladium, Platinum and rhodium can be the catalyst. But here in the question, they say rhodium catalyzes the reduction of nitrogen uh, to oxide, or in simple term, NO, yeah, to nitrogen. So we need to draw diagrams to suggest that. Okay, how do we uh, draw the diagram to suggest that? So you see here what happens, okay, if you have NO, yeah, same, okay, they will diffuse and come, yeah, and then they form the bond. So what we're supposed to have over here, adsorption, okay, adsorption, and then they go to the surface of the catalyst. Do remember, this is gas, this is solid, yeah, so heterogeneous, yeah. So they form the bond, the bond between NO will be weakened, you can see weakened, and then now, okay, they are going to actually uh, start to form bonds with the neighboring nitrogen and nitrogen. So they actually form bonds over there. Okay, so what will happen? They are going to get the nitrogen and release. Yeah, something like that, this option. Okay, but I want you to also think about the previous chapter that you have learned, nitrogen and sulfur. Now, under catalytic removal, you will see that, okay, there is carbon monoxide, okay, will combine with NO to give you carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Uh, this is found in nitrogen and sulfur. So in this example, we just focus over here to give you this. But what actually happens over there, okay, carbon monoxide also will come, okay? Carbon monoxide also will come, and then they will also be adsorbed to the rhodium, okay, palladium, platinum, and so on, okay? And then, okay, you are going to have nitrogen and nitrogen, you are going to get oxygen and oxygen, they give you O2. So what will happen, okay, because the carbon monoxide comes over there also, the carbon monoxide will react with uh, oxygen, they will be oxidized to become carbon dioxide, okay? So in catalytic converter, okay, you do not have only nitrogen, you also have carbon dioxide. Okay, so do remember carbon dioxide is also a greenhouse gas, yeah? So catalytic converters do not solve the problem of uh, greenhouse uh, uh, global warming. It doesn't uh, solve that problem. But what they do is they try to convert the carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide, okay, to become something that is less harmful. But this one also causes global warming, yeah? So it's something extra, yeah? But whatever it is, Okay, we have covered these two. Okay, palladium, platinum, and rhodium in catalytic removal of oxides of nitrogen. Okay, why you need to remove them? Okay, and O will cause, okay, uh, it will cause acid rain. Yeah, so we don't want the acid rain, so we will remove in form of nitrogen. Yeah, so next, okay, let's move on. So we have done with the heterogeneous, yeah? So let's actually move on to homogeneous, okay? Homogeneous, okay, you need to focus on two reactions, okay? Two reactions. So number one, okay, is going to be uh, atmospheric oxides of nitrogen, okay? In the oxidation of atmospheric sulfur dioxide. You see this one is like something related to, okay, your nitrogen and sulfur again okay but i will actually go through the b first yeah okay fe2 plus or fe3 plus in i minus and this reaction yeah so you see here okay normally homogeneous catalyst okay for heterogeneous catalyst they uh involve gases okay and then uh, the catalyst is going to be solid okay so the catalyst will provide uh some uh place for the adsorption Okay, but for homogeneous, it's different. Yeah? Homogeneous normally involves the changes in oxidation number. 
Okay, so for example, okay, in this uh, reaction, there are going to be two-step reaction. Okay, but here, okay, the overall reaction is And just wait for a while, yeah. I think I got disconnected for a while. Okay. Let me share the screen again. And while you're waiting for me, yeah. So just uh please take uh okay, while you're waiting for me, okay. Do remember okay what actually ha uh, happened over here. Okay, this one is going to be related okay, to this catalyst catalytic reaction also. Okay, but you see here, this catalytic reaction is going to be involving changes in oxidation number. Okay, if you look over here, they say okay, you are going to use this catalyst, okay, and then you are going to give you this and this as your product. Yeah. So here, okay, this one, okay, they happen in multi-step reaction also. Yeah, they happen in multi-step in to be exact, two steps. Okay. And you can see that what happens first, okay, the catalyst, okay, the catalyst, you see the catalyst is also aqueous. All these are going to be aqueous, then liquid and gas. Uh, gas, how come? Yeah, gas is going to go away from the mixture. Yeah, so it means in the end, there's aqueous and liquid. Okay, aqueous and liquid. So it means that most of them, the reaction mixture is going to be in liquid form. Yeah, and then iodide is also in liquid form, aqueous. Okay, it has water, so it's going to be liquid. So here, all of them are same phase, so therefore, it's homogeneous catalyst. What happens over there? Okay, when you react with I minus, you are going to get water, one of the product. But you are getting this IO minus, okay, additional. And this IO minus is going to react over here. Uh, this is what we call as intermediate. The intermediate is going to be uh, used up, okay? So you form something, you don't want that, okay? You react, okay? That is intermediate. So this in are going to get the catalyst back okay the catalyst is going to come back and you are going to get the o2 okay as one of the product okay so you are going to get okay what is in there is going to be changes in oxidation number okay what happens this is going to be oxidation number is negative one Okay, how to identify and so on you refer to redox uh redox reaction yeah so negative one so Going to be x then plus negative two equals to negative one x equals to negative one plus two so it's plus one oxidation number is plus one so you can see that there is a change in oxidation number in over here and next it will change again to negative one there is changes in oxidation number okay but what is important over here is homogeneous catalyst involves okay it will be used up Okay, and then it will be formed again. Now that is very important. Okay, so catalysts normally uh, we say catalysts don't take part in the reaction. Actually, it's wrong. Yeah, they do take part. Okay, but how they take part? Okay, is important. So they are going to be reformed again. Yeah. So this is going to be roughly yeah about homogeneous catalysts. But now, okay, if you go into detail about the examples that they want you to learn, uh, let's actually go into detail about the examples that they want you to learn. Now, I will try to relate back to a nitrogen chapter in AS. Now, nitrogen, okay, nitrogen is very unreactive, yeah, because of the triple bond. Okay, you need a very uh, high energy to break that triple bond. Yeah, but lightning and thunderstorm, okay, can actually break that. Uh, can provide enough energy. Okay, for it to react with oxygen, nitrogen, 70% is nitrogen, right? So they will actually uh, react okay, with the oxygen okay, to give you okay, either NO or NO2. Okay, this one can be formed. And because of that, okay, you can have possibilities of having acid rain and so on. Okay, but the same situation can also happen in car engine because car engine high pressure. 
high temperature. So nitrogen can also okay, be changed into NO and NO2. Okay. Now, because of this NO2, yeah, let's say we are talking about NO2 over here. Okay. So this NO2, okay, they will help okay, to oxidize SO2. Okay, they will oxidize SO2. Okay, so you can see the reaction is going to be NO2 plus SO2. Okay, do remember SO2 also, yeah, uh, is going to, SO3 will give you acid rain also. Yeah, go and read about nitrogen and sulfur. Yeah, so SO2 plus NO2, okay, they will give you SO3 and then NO. Okay, and then the NO that you uh, produce, okay, it will react further with oxygen to give you NO2. Now, if I ask you, okay, in this two-step reaction, which one is the catalyst, okay, you should know, okay, the catalyst is being used up and it will be reformed again. Yeah? So if I ask you what is the catalyst over here, the catalyst is going to be NO2. Yeah, that is going to be the catalyst. Okay, this catalyst, what does it do? Okay, it just helps to change SO2, okay, plus half O2 to give you SO3. Okay, the catalyst is NO2. Okay, and that is a function. And if you want to relate to what you have learned, they do experience changes in oxidation number. Uh, then you can actually calculate the oxidation number. X, okay, this one minus four equals to zero. Okay, X is going to be plus four. Okay, so this one is going to be X minus two equals to zero. X equals to plus two. Okay, if you don't know all this, okay, please refer to redox. Yeah, so that chapter. So you can see there is going to be from four to become plus two. So there is going to be changes in oxidation number. Yeah, so that is going to be related okay, to here. Yeah, so now let's move on to the next example. Now, in this next example, maybe this is uh, something that may look too many things, yeah, but it's actually, trust me, it's quite simple, yeah. So if you look over here, okay, this is what we call iodine peroxide disulfate reaction. Uh, why so difficult? Okay, don't need to worry about that because in your syllabus, they don't even actually write the uh, full name, okay. They, you can just write the uh, S2O8 2 minus, okay, no need to even know the full name. Now, so this one in uh, simple form, they are called per sulfate, yeah, S2O8 2 minus. Okay, what happens? Okay, they will oxidize iodide ions to iodide. Uh, this is going to be the full equation. Okay, this is the full equation. And okay, this reaction will happen with the presence of a catalyst. Uh, what is the catalyst? Yeah, you can see from the reaction one and reaction two, you can see Fe3 plus okay, is changing into Fe2 plus. Fe2 plus change back to Fe3 plus. By now, you should know that this is the catalyst okay this is how you identify okay so fe3 plus is the catalyst for this so i'll write down this is fe3 plus and fe3 plus is aqueous 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 homogeneous catalyst don't go and say adsorption desorption all that okay homogeneous just by looking at the oxidation number okay the first thing what happen okay this one is very important also okay you see here okay generally this reaction is very slow okay why this reaction is very slow because okay it's involving two types of ion which is negatively charged now when you bring negative and negative okay they will repel and if you bring reactant and reactant okay you need certain energy for them to react Okay, so that is what we call as activation energy. And they are repelling. So there should be another extra energy to get that reaction, you know, to overcome the repulsion forces. Okay, so the activation energy for this reaction is quite high. Yeah, so you can see if you draw the energy uh, profile diagram, okay, the activation energy is going to be from here to here. Okay, quite high yeah, for the reaction. Now, what you can do, okay, by using the catalyst, okay, the catalyst is Fe3+. You see the Fe3+, will drastically change the activation energy. Why? Because Fe3+, and I-, minus, they are oppositely charged. So, they are able to bond easily, okay, they are able to bond easily, and they can give you this and this, okay, they will form I2 first, yeah, and Fe2+. 
So this F E two plus, okay, they will react with this and give you this and this. Okay, what is important over here? There is going to be changes in oxidation number from plus three to become plus two. Okay, so this equation you need to know. Yeah, maybe it looks too uh, too much. Okay, but you need to actually know how to write this equation. Okay, F E three plus they will change into F E two plus pi minus they will change into I two. Okay, and then S two O eight two minus will change to S O four two minus. Okay, you need to know write uh, how to write the equation. Why I tell you how to write? Because it is mentioned in your syllabus. Okay, normally I don't include things that they didn't mention in your syllabus, but if they have mentioned in your syllabus, you must know how to write the equation properly. Okay, but another thing that you may notice over here is. Okay, when this reaction is happening, this is two-step reaction. Step number one, step number two, where it involves okay, Fe2 plus okay, as the intermediate. Okay, it means from Fe2 3 plus, you form Fe2 plus, then you form back Fe3 plus. So the intermediate, the moment you have intermediate, okay, it's like you are going to have two peaks. Okay, or two humps. Yeah. So you can see here, okay, this first activation energy okay, is for okay, the reaction from Fe3 plus to 2i minus to give you this. That is going to be the first activation energy. What is this? Okay, this is to form Fe2 plus and I2. Okay. And what is next? Okay, is going to be if you look at the second part from Fe2 plus to form Fe3 plus. So this is going to be the activation energy for that. So there will be two activation energy over here. Yeah. So you are going to be drastically changing the activation energy, but do remember they are going to be the graph for the energy profile diagram will be different because why? Because formation of intermediate. Yeah, formation of intermediate. Now, this one is done. Okay. The last part that I want to discuss is going to be this energy profile diagram because you would have learned this okay, last time yeah, uh, in uh, AS. Okay? Now, in AS, we didn't really focus because there are going to be some uh, MCQ questions. You know, They will ask, okay, there is going to be a graph like this and then this one belongs to what? Under what? Okay, under halogenol alkane or alcohol. Okay, because we have learned SN1 mechanism and SN2 mechanism. Okay, nucleophilic substitution. Okay, now please remember, okay, this one maybe if you forget also, I can actually just explain to you very fast. Okay, SN1, okay, happens for tertiary halogen alkane or tertiary alcohol, yeah. So tertiary halogen alkane, so SN1, okay, tertiary, okay, this one happens for primary. Why tertiary? Tertiary will have tendency to form carbocation. So let's say I'm going to put CR, R, R, okay, let's say I put um, Cl, okay, and then, okay, what happened? Okay, let's say I'm going to react with OH minus, okay, what happened? Okay, the reaction that will happen is basically, okay, if I want to write down, okay, the mechanism of the reaction, first thing is this one will go here, delta minus, delta plus, first thing is you are going to form a carbocation, okay, which is the plus, and then you have Cl minus over here, okay. Next is, okay, this is going to be, you are going to have, okay, this one I'll just put it, you are going to have the OH minus, okay, they are going to come over here, okay, and then they will give you the CRRROH. Uh, this is what we call, okay, as, okay, this one is going to be the slow step, this is fast step. Now, what is important over here is, this is the intermediate, which is the stable intermediate, okay? A stable intermediate, okay? And if I draw this graph, okay, for the energy profile diagram for SN1, they will follow this graph, SN1, yeah? They will follow this graph. Why? This is going to be your carbocation, okay? This is going to be your carbocation. Now, what will happen to SN2? Okay, I'll just uh, write down over here also SN2. Now for SN2, okay, it's going to be for primary. So if we see, then let's say R, okay, H, H, and then CL, okay. 
So you are going to have again, you go over here, delta negative and positive, okay, delta positive. Now do remember, they are not going to form carbocation. Why? Okay, there's not enough uh, positive inductive effect, yeah? So this one, they have uh, three positive inductive effect. So they tend to form a okay, carbocation. But here, no, okay, you are not going to get that. So what will happen, okay? You are going to have, okay, the OH minus come and join directly to the delta plus, okay? And then you are going to have the RC uh, H, okay, then Cl, and then OH, and then H. And what will happen next, okay? Now this one will go here, okay? And then you will have, okay, this one R, C, H, H, okay? And then OH and then Cl. Okay, this one they also call intermediate also, you know, okay? Don't get just uh, get confused with intermediate and intermediate. Okay, so what is important over here is to know that what is happening over here. Here, the bond is not completely broken. Okay, the bond is not completely formed. Okay, that's why the bond is broken and formed over here. It's like how, you know, okay, you are in a, a SN1, it's like you are in a marriage. Okay, you are in a marriage. You meet someone, okay, you meet someone, and this someone, okay, this guy go and cheated on the wife. Okay, go and cheat on the wife. Okay, but now he decided, okay, I cannot stay together with the wife. I need to do something right. So he divorced uh, the wife. Okay, he get separated. So he become stable first. Okay, he become stable. And then he go and marry. Okay, so that is going to be, you are coming to a state that is stable. Okay, that is the uh, state that we want over here. But if you look over here, it's like, Okay, a situation where the guy, okay, and the wife, okay, and then suddenly someone come into, uh, into the life. This guy still maintain the relationship over here, still cheating on the wife, okay, and then he's not stable at all, okay? That is the situation over here. So if they are not stable, they cannot form a stable part over here. So how the graph for SN2 looks like, the graph looks like normal only. Okay, only one hump. Okay, so SN1 is going to have two humps over there. Okay, very, very important. Yeah, what is SN1 and SN2? So now since you already learned about this, now I can explain. What is SN1? SN1 tells us the order of the reaction. Okay, what is the order of the reaction for this? There's only one reactant, okay, before the slow step. That's why SN1. What is SN2? The order of the reaction also. There are two reactants. What are the two reactants that involve over here? The two reactants is this and this. That's why they are called SN2. Okay, please remember that. Okay, the difference between SN1 and SN2. SN1, only one reactant. SN2, two reactants, okay? So that is uh, what I want to explain to you today. Yeah, uh, I have done an, a, a chapter revision, yeah, a video, okay? And all the videos that I've done in this chapter is also there. You can just directly go there, okay? And some students, okay, from PIC, they have done some uh, videos, okay, on the homogeneous catalyst. You can choose any one from here, any one from here. You can also go through that, okay, uh, to, in order to understand this chapter better, yeah? So the last thing that I want to show you over here is just the padlet link okay please uh complete the padlet yeah write your reflection on today's lesson but basically okay we have completed the entire chapter yeah thank you guys okay i hope you really learned something from this chapter yeah see you guys bye thanks very much thank you bye really appreciate that sir thank yeah, you yeah see you, you. See you. bye sir see you Okay, Christopher, the first step always the slower step. Yes, correct. He already left. <laughs> okay, see you.